What's up guys, Steffi Cohen here. I'm here with Josh and I'm gonna take him through some mobility drills for the hip to improve his squat. All right, so when we talk about the hip, it is obviously important that you need a certain degree of hip range of motion in order to be able to hit depth in the squat and do that safely without compensations. But it is also important to take into account hip range of motion, even if your goal is not to squat a million pounds because you wanna be able to you know, squat down into the ground and pick up your kids and be able to sit in the toilet and stand back up without pain for many, many years, right? So even if you don't have um, visible range of motion deficits in the squat, this is something that you should be working on, okay? So the first exercise that I'm gonna take him through is gonna be a, you can use this as a warm up, and it's called a hip 90-90, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. So go ahead, sit back, sit down on the, on the floor. So <clears throat> first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna put your feet kind of a little bit wider than than um, hip width, okay? And what I want you to do is from there, just drop your knees into the ground. And ideally, you'll be able to get kind of a 90 degree shape on the front and a 90 degree shape on the back, okay? Ideally, you'll be able to keep your ischial tuberosities, which is the bottom of your hip bones on the ground. If you can't do that, then that's something else that you can work on. How does that feel for you? Do you feel it right there on your hip? Do you feel any sort of pinching in the front of the hip? Or no. that's okay? Okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to try to face forward. Can you do that? Yeah? Can you face a little bit more to the side? So towards, yeah. How does that feel? Is that good? Okay. So from there, what I want you to do, and this is another FRC movement. What I want you to do is, I want you to try to press that ankle into the ground, okay? So think about the initial push that you're gonna give us like a 20% of your maximum muscle capacity, okay? So you are gonna start at the ankle, okay? And then go into the knee, put like 50% into the glute, say 60%. Put both hands on the floor, yep. Into the glute, then try to engage your whole body, kind of like a 70%, go all the way up to 100. Like you should be shaking, I should be, try to keep both knees on the ground. Okay, now what I want you to do, try to bring yourself forward using your, your hip front muscles. If you're trying to bring yourself forward, good. Try to keep your chest up as if, as if you wanted to show someone what your shirt says, like that. Okay, and keep pushing down on the ground with your knee. And five, four, three, two, one. Okay, relax. How does that feel? It's intense, eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's the first exercise you're gonna do. Okay, you gotta remember, you gotta do it with intention. It's like anything else that you do at the gym. You are squatting, you're squatting with intention. You're doing your mobility work, you're doing your mobility work with intention. Okay, so a little recap there, because I know that it's a lot of steps. You wanna get your hips 90 degrees, knees at 90 degrees, hips at 90 degrees, both legs. You're gonna twist to the side of the front leg, okay? And you're gonna start with contraction of the ankle, then the knee, then the hip, and then your whole body, okay? You're gonna hold that contraction as much as you can at 100% of the capacity of your muscle. Then you're gonna reach forward, trying to pull yourself forward, showing your chest, and then you're gonna relax. You can repeat that about five times if you can, because this is a really tough one, okay? After you've done that, you're gonna do hip 90-90 rotations. So you're gonna come from here, all the way to the other side, and keeping your heels grounded in each rotation. How does that feel for you, Let's see. You look like you're struggling. It looks like that one's way worse than the other two. If you film from the front, you can see the discrepancies. So look here, the hip is totally off the ground. And that's pretty common to see one side. Look at the back rounding. He can't even keep his back flat in this position. So just go, go back and forth. This is something you should actually be doing because remember, if you have a discrepancy, a visible discrepancy like that in a joint from side to side, it's, it's like a car that's running out of alignment, you know? If you, if you have a car that's out of alignment and you use it for 15 years, like what do you think it's gonna happen? And obviously, one side of the tire is gonna be burnt out and the other side's gonna be perfect and that's the same thing that's gonna happen to the hip here, okay? Good. So when we talk about the hip, the hip is a little bit more complicated than say the knee that only has two motions, flexion and extension 
or the ankle that has flexion and extension, external rotation, external rotation. The hip is one of the few joints, like the shoulder, that can go all the way around. It can go almost in 360 degrees. So we wanna, be able, we wanna make sure that we're able to not only access all of those mo motions, but stabilize all of those motions, okay? And when it comes to stabilizing, we wanna make sure that one, the muscles in the front, and in, sorry, the muscles in the back can stretch, but also the muscles in the, in the front can shut up when those muscles are lengthening. So another common uh, loss of motion or mobility area, problem area, is the front of the hip, the hip flexor. You know, we spend all day long sitting like this in our computer, in our car, driving, eating like this in this position that the hip flexors in the front of the hip eventually chronically shorten, okay? And you know, then it makes it hard for us to do anything in the gym. So we're gonna address that as well, okay? The first exercise I'm gonna show you for that, all you're gonna need is a ball, a lacrosse ball, here, take this one, or a baseball ball or whatever. What you're gonna do, you're gonna lay on your back, put that ball between your hip, okay? And we're gonna do a single leg bridge, okay? And what this does, it ensures that you go through full hip extension, but you're also activating your hip flexors there and waking them up, telling them, hey, I want you to do stuff, okay? So you're gonna do that, extend your hip fully on the other side, keep your knee fully bent, get him back down. Now do the other side. Is it one is one easier than the other for you too? Good. Do you want to even like bend your knee a little bit more? There. You're struggling there too. Damn, you need some PT sessions with me. Okay. Right. And finally. This is an exercise, a Bulgarian split squat that a lot of people do for strength, but I'm gonna show you a little twist to work on your mobility, okay? So you're gonna take, if you do your split squats here, I want you to take one foot, one step forward, okay? So you actually feel that stretch in the front of your hip. What I want you to do, you're gonna go all the way down, try to touch your knee to the ground, and reach to the opposite side. Hold it there a few seconds, come back up. Come down, all the way to the other side, and back up. Uh, let's do three per leg. Good. And if you don't have the balance to do that, then you should be worried. All right, and remember, it's not black and white, it's not as clear cut as I just explained in this video. There's a lot of other exercises that you can do, and it all, it's all gonna depend on your current level of fitness, what your goals are, what your restrictions are. But this is a good place to start, and these are all harmless exercises that anyone can do to try to improve both their mobility and stability of the hip. Hope you enjoy it, hope your squat gets better.